Hey, welcome back to Morrison Heights Family Connect. It's the podcast of Morrison Heights Baptist Church. I'm Tim Peabody. Happy New Year to you. It's 2023. And our first guest on the podcast this year is not a guest because he's the pastor. Dr. Greg, welcome. We went to the bottom of the barrel and we struck <laughs> gold. <laughs> no, good to see you. How you been? I've been okay. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell us about Christmas with the Belser Club. Oh, yeah, we had a big crowd. Uh, our three girls and their husbands and nine grandchildren all in one house. We had a big time. We didn't have but one meltdown, and uh, that was a minor one. So all was good. Well, I think you fared better than my family, yeah, if that's well, the case. I'm, I'm pretty proud of how things turned out. <laughs> well, good, good. Uh, what's, uh, what's the new year looking like at Morrison Heights? What's big on your mind right now? Well, the reality is that, um, you know, we, we've joked um, many times that pastors love to make uh, predictions about, you know, what God might do or might not do. And uh, nobody predicted COVID three years ago, and that sort of shut down the uh, success stories of all the prognosticators. So I think about the new year, and I think about it, and I hold uh, my thoughts, as it were, with a loose grip accordingly. Uh, Certainly, I hope that we will continue to uh, advance the gospel, hope that we will continue to see more and more people come to Christ. Parenthetically, 2022, uh, from a number standpoint, was the largest number of baptisms in my 18 years, or almost 18 years of tenure here at Morrison Heights. We've had a a, a, a great reward there uh, with seeing people come to Christ. So we're thankful for that. So we'd like to continue and see more and more people come to Christ, see our people sharing Christ and our children and teenagers, college students and adults uh, alike come to faith. We certainly want to do a better job of discipling those who are converted, those who are newly converted and those who are long time converted like you and me. Uh, We want to continue to grow in grace. We want to see more and more people connect with uh, using their gifts for the kingdom. Uh, You know, the Bible is very clear, Tim, that uh, we we do not live for rewards in this life, and yet it is powerfully difficult to, if you will, squash or kill the flesh in all of us. We We long for comfort in this life. We long for ease in this life. We long for the things that money can provide or success can provide or some other measure can provide. And we lose our anchor point with God, with heaven, with the promise of eternal life. Um, And so it's it's an ongoing battle. We must fight it. Um, We don't want to say that The Lord's blessings are a problem or a curse, but at the same time, we want to acknowledge that we don't live for those earthly rewards. We live for eternal things. So we're going to continue to fight on that front, bring people to Christ and show them that uh, the way of Christ is the the way of God. We have um, real opportunities. Uh, I will say just another sort of report on how 2022 went. It's uh, the biggest financial year in the history of the church. Uh, Here we are on uh, the first few days of January, so we still don't know exactly uh, how the calendar year ended up, but it it looks like that we've had the largest offerings we've ever had. And uh, what does that mean? Well, that means uh, that we can do more for the kingdom than we've ever done before. And we have grand plans around the world. We are heavily involved in places that we've never been involved as heavily before. Central Asia uh, continues to be on the forefront as we've adopted an unreached people group there. And uh, we're doing more in India, where Dr. Jolly Ramai is, than we've ever done before. And, And the news from there is just phenomenal. Things are really, really going well. Um, and we're so excited about the, the structure that has been put in place. Um, and then, of course, we have the what, what we might consider traditional things that we're doing on the mission front, planting churches, um, 
helping our mission partners through the International Mission Board and so forth be successful. We've got several trips planned. COVID kind of shut down our overseas travel, and we began to come back out of that last year, sending trips around the world, and, and we're going to really be more aggressive in that uh, arena in 2023. Um, so we're excited about that, hopeful for uh, continue to see advance on that front. Good. You got to see the college team in Houston over the break, right? I did. We sent a team of 10 college students to Houston. They're working with Afghans. And uh, just so very, very glad to, to see the work there, the, the young couple that we support there. Uh, Josh and Sonny Matthews got to uh, share some time with them, share a meal with them, and uh, also to encourage our college team who were there. Uh, just, I'm so grateful, as you know, Tim, uh, what uh, what our college ministry led by Drew Dabbs, John Harding, I know I could go on. We have a large number of folks who are involved. Chris, Courtney, Austin, yeah, all those people, the wonderful people. <laughs> Uh, they're just, they're just uh, to, to borrow a phrase, they're just killing it. And uh, so as a result, uh, we have uh, mission opportunities and we have mission participants in arenas that we've uh, never had opportunity before. So their leadership is paying off. And uh, so, so, so encouraged by the work that was done by our team in Houston. And uh, it was uh, it's just a little over over there and back kind of a trip to to say to them uh, you know the pastor uh, loves you and supports you and you know I, I'll tell you an anecdote uh, there was a time in my life when I was 19 and 20 years old and uh, in fact I got excited about Jesus when I was 20 and uh, I, I reflect on that often you know what what difference does it make if the pastor pays attention to you when you're 20 or 21 or 22? And uh, the answer is, it's a big deal. And uh, so I thought, you know what? It's Christmas holidays. <laughs> Our team's over there. And they probably don't don't know the pastor even knows they're over there. But I'm going to go over there and I'm going to hang out with them for overnight and, uh, and just tell them. I actually took them to breakfast the next morning and just tried to say, we're proud of you, proud of what God is doing. Uh, so the end of that is to say that our mission teams continue to do good work. That's just one instance. Uh, just, just so very, very excited about the possibilities for gospel advance through our church. If you look back on 2022, hard to believe that year is completed now. Uh, if you said that was a good year, what would be two or three things at your church that would come to mind? Uh, well, I think uh, obviously our uh, baptism number is up. That's always the number one thing. People coming to faith, that matters more than anything in all the world. And uh, so we're delighted with that. Uh, secondly, uh, the return to uh, attendance for most of our congregation. Uh, we still have pockets of people who are either unable or unwilling, seemingly, uh, to come back to church. So uh, we're we're eager to see that uh, continue to make progress there. But, but overwhelmingly, our people have responded back to church, and uh, that's not been the case in every congregation, but it has been in ours, so I'm very encouraged by that. Uh, I think thirdly, uh, if I had to pick a third, perhaps, the, the ongoing spirit of our church, uh, th this is the kind of thing you have to be here to kind of feel what I'm about to say, or at least I think you do. I, th I don't think you can sit home and feel this watching our broadcast week after week after week. Maybe you can. Uh, but there is a can-do spirit around here. Uh, the answer is typically yes instead of no. You know, there are some places where you come up with a new idea and the first answer is, no way! Uh, but around here the answer is, yeah, maybe so. And that's the kind of hang people I want to hang out with. Uh, you know, in the old days, we would make decisions, and I'm talking real old days, 20, 30, 40 years ago. We'd make decisions, you know, do we have enough money? Do we have enough people? Uh, allegedly, everybody wanted to do it. They just couldn't see that it could be done. 
Well, today, uh, money is, is not the hindrance that it once was because we, we do have resources. People are eager to go, to serve, to do. Just look at serve that we do during the summer that our missions ministry has put together. We have 400 people every week or virtually every week mobilized to do projects to serve our community, uh, individuals and ministries and various things. And our people do this eagerly. They do this gladly. There's a strong affirmation that we're doing God's work here. And uh, that's the sense that I get week after week after week, that we're coming to church with a sense of expectancy that God is going to use little old us to do something that's beyond what we thought. It, it, sometimes, you know, there's a phrase, your, your, your grasp uh, is beyond your reach. Um, and I, I, I don't think that's what's going on here. I think the, the reality at Morrison Heights is that if we can dream it up, we can, we can see it happen. I'll just give you an illustration. Uh, as you know, Tom is behind the camera here. Uh, Tom and Tim gave strong leadership to our Advent uh, publication that we just did, which was done so beautifully. And Tom had uh, the lion's share of uh, design work in that. And you served as editor of that project. Then we, of course, put a float in the Clinton Christmas Parade. We had a cookout at Lions Club Park. We fed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Clintonians free, no charge. We gave them a bag of information about the church and gave away, we, we prepared 3,000. And uh, my uh, report is that we could have given away twice as many as we gave away. Uh, so as a result, we, we embraced this new challenge of trying to, to say Jesus matters in, in our lives. Could he matter in yours? Would you consider that? And uh, our people have just, again and again, comments have just been overwhelmingly like, we, why are we not doing this kind of thing? Why are we not doing more of this kind of thing? So the biggest challenge for us on a staff level is what's, what are not necessarily just the ultimate things, the big things that involve thousands and thousands perhaps of people and thousands and thousands of dollars, but what can we do that, that, uh, that, that's happening literally every week, every month, in our community that we could connect with, that we could be involved with, that we could say to people, the church is really salt and light. We want to show you that we have the love of Christ and with the love of our community. So there's all kinds of ways we're going to be thinking about that in the new year. I'm looking forward to those conversations. Yeah. Right on. Uh, First, you got to get your knee surgery out of the way. Yeah, yeah. knee surgery. Tell uh, us about that. Oh, yeah, my goodness. Uh, so uh, this knee... Don't hit it so hard, Greg. Uh, I've torn my meniscus, for those who are <laughs> bodily challenged. I mean, If you're doubting the story, I can see a little swelling yeah, on that knee yeah, from Yeah, this here. knee's bigger than this <laughs> knee right now. Uh, so I tore the cartilage in that knee. And uh, the next question everybody has asked me in the last week is, well, how'd you do that? And the answer is, uh, you don't have time for that story. I, I live hard. I play hard. I, I work hard. I'm just a hard man. I just do a lot of crazy things. Anyway, I've torn the cartilage in this knee. And uh, so a week from tomorrow, I'm going to have some little arthroscopic surgery, which puts you on a crutch for a day or two or three, puts you in physical therapy for a little while. Uh, I hope it doesn't impact me uh, on a Sunday I'm not planning on it uh, knocking me out of church. It may knock me out of preaching, but I don't plan on it knocking me out of church. There's nothing wrong with anything else in my life, but I do have kind of a bad limb right now. So I'm walking like uh, Chester on the old gun smoke program, for those of you who are old <laughs> enough. I'm kind of leaning to one side and waddling like a penguin. And uh, so it's that a good part. Look for you. Yeah, no, it's not either. I'm trying to get better. <laughs> Anyway, so I'll put on a good face this Sunday, and then the next week uh, I'll have some minor knee surgery. Now, I've seen before a child try to tackle you after church on a Sunday morning. That needs to not happen this yeah, week, it, right? We need to go at least one more week without that not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the enthusiasm of uh, folks who want to hug the pastor, but uh, 
we need to cut back on that for at least one more Sunday. So we'll see. So you're not going to tell them that you heard it playing golf? Well, that was a contributor, Tim. I play hard. I work hard. <laughs> I live hard. I'd be embarrassed, too, if I heard it playing golf. <laughs> well, there's a long story to that, and I won't belabor it. But, yeah, it did include golf at some point. Anyway, I, I had a, a wound that ended up being more than a wound. So now it's a full-fledged problem, and uh, I've found there's a whole world, a subculture of uh, sports medicine, orthopedic process, all that stuff that I have stayed away from in my entire time that I've lived in Mississippi. And uh, But I, I do know what I'm getting into. Uh, if I could encourage the, the brothers and sisters who watch this program, uh, I did have surgery on this knee 20 years ago while I was pastoring in Alabama. So I actually know what I'm getting into. You don't have to tell me your knee stories or your elbow stories or any of that. Same I, surgery on the other no, knee? No, the other knee, yeah. I had the same surgery on the other side. I, I think you got a defect. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, I'm blaming my dad for this. <laughs> He's dead, but I, that's, that's as good as blame as any. Uh, my wife is, and in fact, I even had a hard crack from one of the elders about uh, about that kind of thing, too, about being defective. And, uh, <laughs> but... Uh, that's all right. I can take it. That's the wrong word. Let me let me give a lesson to people at home. If you're interviewing your pastor, don't use the word defect. <laughs> it's just just bad. Fun. Hey, no, it's okay. okay. I've heard it. My my own my own family has uh, said said as much. But I'm I'm delighted. Uh, the good news is I I got good heart, good lungs, good kidneys. You know everything's fine. I just have uh, at this point a bad knee that needs a little uh, scoping. Well. I hope and pray that everything goes well and you're yeah. back in action soon. Well, right now, it just gives me a bad mood. I just yeah. a bad mood. It doesn't hurt to sit right here like this. This is wonderful. Fine. I'm sleeping pretty well. Uh, managed to do all that. But uh, walking is a problem. And since I intend to walk for many, 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 many more years of my life, <laughs> I am going to get this surgery behind me next week. Uh, good. Uh, in... <clears throat> This weekend, we have a really big and sad uh, event, the funeral of Bobby Rankin. Yes, we did. Jerry Rankin has lost his wife. Well, it's a, it's a privilege to serve uh, Dr. Rankin and to serve Bobby, his wife, whom we love dearly. Uh, that funeral will be Saturday, and uh, we expect, obviously, a, a large crowd. We, we expect that, and we expect... Uh, a lot of support from a lot of people in a lot of different corners of the Southern Baptist world. Uh, and so it's going to be an important day for us to serve that church, that, that, that family well, as it is in every funeral. But uh, Dr. Rankin has lived a, a different life than virtually anybody else watching this program. And uh, as a result, uh, it's going to be a... a a, a much different kind of experience that we're delighted to serve this family. I was teaching a missions class through New Orleans Seminary a few years back, and Dr. Rankin graciously agreed to come as a guest speaker at our class. And so he talked to the students one week. The next week, one of my students came back and said, hey, that guy that came to class last week, he was in our textbook. I said, yes, he was in our textbook. It's Dr. Jerry Rankin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was in the textbook. In fact, he's written That's many, right. many, more than a dozen textbooks. Could have used one he wrote. That's right. So, um, yeah. quite the man. We're we're blessed to to be influenced by his life. And yes. Miss Bobby has been a great great part of our church. Oh as well. my, it's a wonderful family. We're delighted. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast. Why don't we pray a prayer blessing over 2023 in our church and the Rankin family and everything that's going on? Will you lead us in prayer. I'll be glad to. Father, our prayer is for you to be lifted high and that the rest of us look to you with adoration and worship. Thank you for your mercies in the past year and for the promise of your continued presence and power in the year to come. We walk by faith, trusting you, hoping in you, clinging to you, claiming your promises as uh, the truth and building our lives accordingly. We pray that you would Lead us where we need to go, that you would make sure that our steps are careful, that we are not reckless, that we are not unwise. Uh, thank you for our staff, for our church, 
for so many who uh, help us be uh, faithful. Thank you for the privilege of walking alongside people that love you and show it moment after moment after moment. We pray that we might see more and more people come to faith, that you might open the doors of heaven, that there might be a time of great revival, a great move of your spirit in our own church, and Lord, by your grace in our own community. We pray for your success, for the success of the gospel through us. We pray for these who are grieving. We pray uh, on this broadcast for the Rankins in particular. We pray for your mercies for them. We are yours, and we trust you, hope in you, follow you. Thank you for this day, for the grace that has been bestowed upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And for your knee and upcoming surgery. Amen. We're all praying for that. Amen. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast. Do you notice before I brought up golf, I put a pause in so that Tom can cut it if we have to. So you can decide that after the episode, whether it gets to air or not. Uh, this is Morse Tonight's Family Connect. We love our family.